having lived through a lot of chaos, now I try to find a lot of order in chaos. We try to understand why these patterns are happening and then create models to take advantage of those patterns. If you actually look at the chart of Dollar Hong Kong, that peg has never been broken except for one day during the Asian crisis. That was yours truly, and it worked. In this class, you will learn how to approach becoming a quantitative manager. Much more importantly in this class, you will learn that you will get your ideas from cases that you least expected, and that to the extent possible, whenever you're thinking about a problem, tear down all the preconditions that you had put on it and break it down to the component and think of it from scratch. I am Mark Malik and this is Alt Street. So, I was born in 1969. The civil war in Lebanon started in 1975. Um, initially, it started uh, between the Christian factions on one side, the PLO, uh, along with the Muslim uh, factions on the other side. We happened to be living in the part that became West Beirut, which was kind of the Muslim side of Beirut, even though we were Christian, but that was sort of the main part of the city. I had a family member who was, uh, you know, managed to get me a gun and a, and a permit to carry it at age, you know, 15, 16. Uh, and then, of course, you know, uh, being young and stupid, one day at age 17, I was sort of um, playing with my gun and I shot myself. I mean, my parents were convinced that given the situation there, um, if I continued on the path that I was in there, I'll end up getting killed. And my dad essentially told me that I can't stay in Lebanon, I have to leave. Uh, and um, gave me an option between, you know, going to France or going to the US. Having gone to the French high school in Lebanon and suffered through that system, uh, I opted for the US. And uh, that was essentially when I left Lebanon to, to come to university in the US. When I moved to the United States, uh, it was a bit of a culture shock for me. My knowledge of English um, was basically limited to, you know, um, one hour twice a week we had in school, um, where we kind of threw paper airplanes at the back of the teacher um, and watching American TV shows. So uh, I really didn't speak much English when I came to the U.S. And uh, given the circumstances of me leaving, obviously my grades were terrible and I couldn't apply the normal way. The father-in-law of my brother was on the board of regents of the University of Portland in Oregon. So he was able to get me what's known as an I-20, which is the acceptance that you need to get a visa to come to the U.S. So my first arrival in the U.S. was in Portland, Oregon, at the University of Portland. It was quite interesting. I mean, Lebanon, even with all the war and everything, is a fairly sophisticated place. And I remember, you know, arriving uh, at the University of Portland, and they took all the international students, and uh, the, there was um, the person in charge of the international students, um, I still remember his name, Father Dorothy. He gathers all the international students and, uh, you know, is sort of, giving us the lay of the land. And um, he's like, you know, now that you're in the U.S., there are certain things that, you know, you need to be aware, with, aware of. You need to bathe every day. Um, you cannot, you know, you have to brush your teeth. Uh, personal hygiene is very important. You have to put on the other And I'm listening to this and I'm like, you know, I'm coming, you know, <laughs> I'm coming from Beirut. I'm not coming from, you know. Uh, anyway, uh, it wasn't exactly the kind of place where, I thought I wanted, I mean, I was very upset. I had a great life in Beirut. Uh, University of Portland was, you know, a good school, but it wasn't sort of the place that I wanted to be at if I had to leave all my friends and, uh, and be away from them. I thought I might as well try to do something with myself. I did my first semester at University of Portland, managed to get A's in every course. Uh, transferred from the University of Portland to Reed College, which is one of the top liberal arts um, in the country that happens to be in Portland, Oregon. At Reed College, they had um, this program, uh, this combined program between Reed and Caltech, where it's actually 
you know, uh, encourage anybody to do these kind of program. A lot of the top liberal arts colleges have them with the top engineering schools. So MIT, Caltech, uh, and a bunch of liberal arts have them. Where essentially, if you want to have both a technical education as well as a liberal arts education, it's a five-year program where you spend um, half of it at the liberal arts college taking all the liberal arts courses with people who actually care about them and want to take them. So it's very stimulating and interesting class conversations. Then you go to the um, you know, uh, technical school, in my case, Caltech, and then you take all the science and engineering courses with people who really are there to. So, so you get the best of both worlds. And after five years, you get two degrees, one from each place. When I got to Caltech, it was um, the beginning of the artificial intelligence neural network era. And I got fascinated with it, and Caltech didn't have a major in it. So I sort of cobbled my own major right, to sort of pass it by the registrar. In my junior year at Caltech, I ended up getting a grant uh, from the Pentagon through NASA's Jet Propulsion Lab, which is co run with Caltech. NASA, the way NASA operates in the US, they have eight different centers. Um, Cape Kennedy, Cape Canaveral, uh, JPL. So JPL is co run with Caltech. And the purpose of the grant um, was to essentially use some of the new mathematical techniques um, I was developing at Caltech to optimize the placement of tanks in a battlefield to maximize the chance of winning. Now, this was a summer grant for, for me to do the work over the summer. And the professor who was doing the leading research in this field, in this mathematical field, was at the University of Wisconsin in Madison. So I went there to do my research with him. And, uh, you know, the first day we're getting to know each other and he finds out I'm from Lebanon. And he makes a comment that you just came from a battlefield. Uh, do you really want to spend the whole term looking at tanks and battlefield? Whether you do blue tanks, green tanks, or red tanks, or whether you do stocks, bonds, and commodities, the math is the same. Why don't you do it on something else and I'll certify it. I didn't know at the time what a stock was or a bond was, but it sounded, you know, like a good idea. So I took him up on his suggestion. I remember checking out a book from the library to learn what a stock or a bond and a commodity were. I wrote a paper on my work. The paper got published, uh, which was a bit unusual for, for an undergrad. And then I went back to Caltech and uh, I was cruising, um, you know, in my senior year. I was finishing at the top of my class at Caltech and had the highest job offer to go work at Oracle uh, for a couple of years before getting my PhD. This is uh, 1992. Larry Allison used to sign these letters himself back then, so I kept my offer letter in case uh, that autograph will be worth something one day. I remember it was $45,000 base and 5,000 bonus, which for a 21-year-old kid in 92 seemed like a small fortune. You know, I was, you know, uh, having the time of my life and then, in the spring term of my senior year, I get a call from somebody saying, you know, this is so-and-so from Solomon Brothers in New York. We read your paper and we'd like to invite you for an interview. Now, frankly, at the time, I didn't know what Wall Street was. I didn't know who Solomon was or his brothers or any of the stuff. But I thought it was a free trip to New York. I had never been and uh, I thought it'd be fun to go. Uh, so I went to the Solomon interview and, um, you know, you know, if you're, you know, back then, back in 92, sort of Solomon was the it firm. It was, you know, the Solomon of Flyers Poker. And uh, they had just moved to this, um, to their brand new space in the World Trade Center. You couldn't help you know, when you went into the trading floor, but sort of fall in love with the whole thing. I, I mean, I was completely taken uh, by the whole thing. And I was thinking in my head that, you know, I don't think they'll ever match what Oracle's offering, but uh, this looks like too much fun. I have to try it. And sure enough, the second day, the MD calls me in and he's like, look, we don't do this very often, but everybody really likes you. We're going to make you an offer on the spot, which ended up being multiple of what, offer, what Oracle was offering. So that was the end of my academic career and the beginning of the Wall Street one. I mean, initially I said, I'll do it for a couple of years, then go back and get my PhD. And I find myself still saying the same thing to this day. You know, I'll do a couple more years and I'll go back and get my PhD. 
I, I still hope one day to go back to school, but uh, in the meantime, I'm having too much fun uh, doing what I'm doing now. Adapting to new environments sort of led me a lot of time to find patterns uh, that are familiar and comfortable, mainly because I think history tends to repeat itself. Um, and of course, when you take a cross-section of market participant today, it's going to be very different than market participant 20, 30 years ago. When you take the whole population of investors and traders, uh, whether from today or from 40 years ago, as a group, they tend to react the same way to the same type of events that happen. So while individually we all do things very differently, when you look collectively at what we call the market, the market, by and large, tend to react the same way to the same, ta to, to the same events that happen. We try to study those patterns and try to understand why these patterns are happening and then create models to take advantage of, of those patterns. So think of it as having lived through a lot of chaos. Now I try to find a lot of order in chaos. <laughs>